Hello, this is Wax Tutorial by Terence P. And in today's video, we will be looking at the never system of a human. Looking at the never system of a human specifically, we will be looking at the central never system of a human. At the intent of this video is to present a 3D model to you, and this is the 3D model that is before you. And in presenting the 3D model, we want to look at specific parts and make them vivid so that you can have a clearer picture of what you have learned in the classroom. This is a person, and what you can see as a letter here in a person that is feeder is the central nervous system. Talking about the nervous system, it is one of the most important systems in the human body, and if you can remember something today, it is because of the nervous system. If you are hearing me today, it is because of the nervous system. If you are seeing this video today, it is because of the nervous system. The nervous system has several functions. However, in this video, we will look at the functions of the different parts of the nervous system and this can give you a broader understanding of the general function of the nervous system. The nervous system, NS nervous system, can be divided into broadly two divisions. And these two divisions are the peripheral nervous system, the PNS, that we we'll discuss in a separate video. And the next one is the central nervous system that I want to discuss in this particular video. I'm going to encycle the central nervous system here, that is the CNS, and this is the CNS. The CNS can be broadly divided into this portion, which is called the brain, and this portion, which is considered as the spinal cord. Firstly, I will begin with the spinal cord. Okay. Highlighted in green here is the spinal cord. The spinal cord is running from up to down. That it has an upper limit and a lower limit. The upper limit is connected to a part of the brain that is referred to as the mandula oblongata. And then you have the lower limit of the spinal cord. Where is the spinal cord running? The spinal cord is running through what is referred to as the vertebral column. And the vertebral column provides protection to the spinal cord. The vertebral column is also known as the backbone. The spinal cord is running basically in the backbone of an individual. This is the first protection of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is also protected by what is referred to as meninges. These are membranes. These are protective layers of membranes referred to as meninges. And the meninges has three Sorry, meninges have three layers. You have what is referred to as the outer layer, the middle layer, and then you have the inner layer. The outer layer is referred to as the dura mater. The dura mater, M -A -T -R. The middle layer is referred to as the arachnoid mater. And the inner layer is referred to as the pi mater. So in a nutshell, the spinal cord is protected by the vertebral column. Now I will consider it here as the backbone. 
and also the spinal cord is protected by what is referred to as meninges m-e-n-i-g-e-s meninges and meninges these are protective layer of membranes and there are three divisions to this particular meninges you have the outer the middle and the inner the octa is referred to as the dura matter the middle is referred to as a rational matter and the inner is referred to as the pi matter the spinal core have specific functions and i want to mention two specific functions of the spinal core in this particular tutorial the spinal core is responsible to connect the peripheral nervous system with the brain we have what is referred to as a peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system consists of a series of spinal nerves these spinal nerves are connected to the spinal cord and whatever sensation that is taken from the rest of the body goes through the peripheral nervous system and then it's connected to the spinal cord and then the spinal cord can take them to the brain the next function is that the spinal cord is responsible for what is referred to as reflexes or spinal reflexes uh, reflexes are predictable involuntary responses to a stimulus such as sneeze, uh, sneezing sneezing is a uh, is a reflex uh, if you, for example, you were walking and then mistakenly a nail juke you and then you reacted, that is a form of reflex. It's a predictable involuntary response to a stimulus. That is a reflex. So the, the spinal cord is responsible for the coordination of information from the peripheral nervous system to that of the brain and it's also responsible for what is referred to as reflex spinal reflex these are predictable involuntary responses to to a stimulus reflexes in a nutshell that is the, the spinal cord now i want to talk about the brain now i want to talk about the brain as you can see this is this is the brain here and the brain is made up of basically three parts you have what is called the the full brain p r a r n you have what is referred to as the mid brain and you have what is referred to as the hind brain Uh, so the brain is basically divided into three parts like I said the forebrain the midbrain and the hind brain okay so uh, let's talk about the forebrain the full brain is made up of the cerebrum. Firstly, the full brain is made up of the cerebrum. C E R E B R U M. This is the first division of the full brain, the cerebrum. Take, uh, put this uh, down again. Right is done. That is the first division of the full brain is considered as the cerebrum. Uh, this portion here, sorry, this particular portion here, uh, I want to isolate the cerebrum. I want to isolate the cerebrum. Let me try to isolate the cerebrum so you can see cerebrum. Okay. Okay, I'm going to isolate the cerebrum. 
spare me a little bit, please. Ah, uh, okay, I think I can isolate the cerebrum. Let me just go back. <clears throat> This here is the, the cerebrum. This particular portion here is the cerebrum. The cerebrum can be divided into two hemispheres. You have what is referred to as the right cerebral hemisphere and the left cerebral hemisphere. The cerebrum is basically protected by what is referred to as the cranium. It is protected by the cranium <clears throat> or the score of the individual. The cerebrum can be basically divided also into four parts. And it parts are normally named as per the bones that they are under. Because we are, like I said, the cerebrum is protected by the cranium. This particular part of the cerebrum is called the frontal lobe. So you have a right frontal lobe and a left frontal lobe. There's a left frontal lobe, there's a left frontal lobe, and this is the right frontal lobe. It is termed as a frontal lobe on grounds that this part of the cerebrum is located below the frontal bone if we move a little to the side here yeah, you have what is referred to as the parietal lobe the parietal lobe has a right side and a left side this is going to be our right parietal lobe if we would take this around this is going to be our left parietal lobe Moving down under what is referred to as a temporal bone, you have what is referred to as a temporal lobe. This is the left temporal lobe. Moving this model around, you have the right temporal lobe. Posteriorly, we have another lobe referred to as the occipital lobe. This is the right occipital lobe and this is the left occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is formed below the occipital bone. Now I want to talk about the functions of the cerebrum. The functions of the cerebrum. The, the cerebrum is the largest part the cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. And like I said, it is a part of the full brain. Mentioning the functions of the cerebrum. The cerebrum has a visual function. That is, sensation coming to the coming from the eyes can come to the cerebrum, and the cerebrum is able to interpret visual information. Also, the cerebrum is responsible for all sensory information, interpretation of all sensory information from the parts of the body that is going to the brain. The cerebrum will interpret or sensory information. Also, the cerebrum is responsible for cognitive behavior or cognitive sensation. The cerebrum is also responsible for memory. The cerebrum is also responsible for memory. The cerebrum is also responsible for motor integration or motor planning, it can plan motor action. These are functions of the cerebrum. These are functions of the cerebrum. The cerebrum is a very important, a very important part of the brain. It's the largest part of the brain is very important. 
all of your mathematical skills and artistic skills that you know today these are all things that are coordinated or these are information that the cerebrum is able to provide for execution the next part of the full brain is referred to as the diencephalon the diencephalon and the diencephalon you have what is referred to as the thalamus being a part of the diencephalon and the hypothalamus being a part of the diencephalon the the thalamus is a relay station the thalamus is a relay station and the the hypothalamus can regulate a lot of functions a lot of functions such as body temperature sex drive carbohydrate metabolism hunger and test I uh, will go back that is for the the full brain the full brain like I said being made up of full brain FB being made up of the cerebrum and that of the diencephalon the diencephalon has the thalamus T and the hypothalamus H the thalamus is a relay station in the hypothalamus Care on specific functions such as the coordination of body temperature, cell dry, carbohydrate, metabolism, hunger, and test. Now I would like to look at the mid brain. The mid brain. Right above the points, you have what is considered as the mid brain. I want to get the mid brain. Uh, so difficult to get the midbrain is specifically right above the pons all right let me do all this the midbrain is specifically right above the pons and it is a center for coordinating reflex responses to visual inputs Next to the mid brain, we have what is referred to as the hind brain. First, to the hind brain, I want to discuss the cerebrum. This is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is a part of the hind brain. The cerebrum. Cerebellum, sorry. Cerebellum is a part of the hind brain. The cerebellum is also considered as the little brain. And this little brain also also has specific functions this little brain cere the cerebellum the cerebellum is responsible for posture and balance it is responsible for muscle tone it is responsible for equilibrium so it is responsible for posture muscle tone balance and equilibrium that's the function of the cerebellum in or not share. Also in the hind brain, you have what is referred to as the mandula oblongata. The mandula oblongata is just above the pond, right above the pond. So right above the pond, the structure you have is referred to as the mandula oblongata. Above the mandula oblongata, you have the pond. Let's talk about some of the functions of the, the mandula oblongata. The mandula oblongata is an enlarged portion of the, the spinal cord. It's an enlarged portion of the spinal cord. Some of the function of the, the mandula oblongata. The mandula oblongata contains centers for breathing, centers for swallowing, and centers for cardiovascular function and digestive secretion. Above the mandula, you have the pons. The pons uh, can serve as bridge. Uh, they can serve as, as, as a bridge. 
the the pawns are, are like linking the pawns are like linking the the cerebrum with the cerebellum and that of also with the mandula oblongata is like a bridge linking different parts parts of the brain uh, at any point in time you can pause the video to go through all of what i've discussed but i think this is the central nervous system in a nutshell you, you are welcome to like this video and share the video with your friends and i will encourage you to subscribe to my channel thank you very much for watching